I thought I'd do a little video about some math. I know, math. Ooh. But this is, stick with me, it's a fairly simple math. But it's math that uh, you really need to know. Um, and, and for those who are, might be watching this, this is nothing but a review or or something of that nature. Well, just bear with me or uh, don't even watch the video. But uh, the, I don't know who all my audience may be. And some might need to, to know this. They may not know it. And as long as uh, the bugs don't keep flying around through the video, we'll be doing fine. <clears throat> One of the most important pieces of math and electronics that you ever deal with and that you really need to know is this one right here. And this is called Ohm's Law. Uh, kind of a weird thing to call it, but Ohm's mainly because a man named Ohm's came up with it. Um, a law, if you ever take physics, you'll find out that they don't like calling anything a law, uh, although they do have several of them. Uh, uh, some of them that come to mind is like Boyle's gas law, um, but Ohm's law is one of them. And really, what Ohm's law is is a relationship, actually, between it, it, it is an actual relationship between current voltage and resistance. Now, when I went to school, we actually had a circle instead of a triangle, but triangles are easier to draw. I'm not an artist. I don't pretend to be, and so I drew a triangle. This is voltage, V for voltage. You may, once in a blue moon, see it as E. E means electromotive force. So if you do, don't let it bother you. But this is your voltage. I is always for current. They always use I. Um, think of it kind of like intensity. And R for resistance. Now. The nice thing about drawing it out either in a circle or a triangle is until you learn it and learn everything about it, uh, the relationship, you can find any one of the values by covering it up. So if I want the voltage, I just look and cover it up, and it's I R or I times R. V equals I R. If I want current, then current will equal the voltage divided by the resistance, V over R. And then if I want resistance, it's voltage divided by current. So it's, it's a nice way of, when you draw it like that, it's a nice way of uh, keeping it in mind. Otherwise, it's uh, the actual way of drawing it or putting it down on paper is V equals IR. Now, Another formula is Watt's Law, or the power formula. And it's power, watts, energy, uh, you know, like a 100-watt light bulb or 10-watt resistor or, or a 756-watt motor, which happens to be a one-horse motor. And it's drew similar, but with this case, we put P over I and B. And again, the same way. If you want P it equals current times voltage. If you want the voltage, then it's the power or in wattage divided by the current. And again, if you want I, then it's P over V. Now, this is fine this way, but by making use of both of these, these two here, I can make something where I don't have to have either the voltage or the current to find power. P can equal I squared R. You'll see this a lot, or hear it a lot. Another way is P equals V squared over R. Now, one of the reasons for kind of maybe having this is you may run into a situation where uh, you have a resistor that needs to be replaced. And if it's an old resistor, like say a dog bone, or something of that nature, you may have a hard time trying to judge by its size, get a good idea 
of what wattage it is. Now, what you can do is, you know, a lot, a lot of the parts listings is not going to give you anything about size. So what you can do is try to figure out the current. Now, one particular example comes to mind to me is where on some radios, like Philco's, off the center tap of the high voltage winding, they will put a series of resistors, two, three, or four. Uh, basically, what they're doing is they're doing that so that they can get some negative voltage to use for biasing the tubes. You may have a resistor in there that's either out of tolerance, burnt, bad, open, whatever reasons, and I can guarantee you that you're not going to find any wattage ratings for it in the parts listing. But what you can do is figure out the current. Now, in any circuit, what goes out must come in. So what's going out to B plus to all the plates, to all the tubes, has to come back through that center tap going through those resistors. So you go to your tube manual, look it up, look up every tube, look at the maximum current for every tube, every plate current, every maximum, add them together, and that will be the current that you can use to figure out the power, the wattage dissipation for that tube, uh, resistor. Now, that's actually going to be a little bit high, but that's okay. Uh, modern day resistors are a lot smaller than older ones, so you know if it's a little bit, you end up putting a little healthier resistor in, it's fine. Um, higher wattage resistors, you know, is not super expensive. In fact, the difference between one watt and two watt can be almost nothing. So <clears throat> this is one way to use this formula. You know what the resistance is. You find the current, you multiply it times itself, or square it, times the resistance, you get your power. How much is dissipated? Add, you know, 20% to it or so, and go to the next size value up above that. If it works out with your 20%, like a 1.1 no, one watt or something like that, um, just get a 2 watt put in there, and you'll be fine. <coughs> now, some other math that you might need to know is this. If you got resistors and you put them in series, they add up. So if I got two 10 ohm resistors, then I put them in series, I get 20 ohms. But if I put them in parallel, it don't work that way. And what it basically is, is what this math is, is how to figure parallel resistance. The total resistance of parallel resistors. This is called, in mathematical terms, the reciprocal of the sum of reciprocals. One over something is the reciprocal of it. So it will be usually wrote this way, one over RT, which is R total, equals one over R1, the first resistor, plus one over R2, dot, 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 just means more and more, however many, plus your, your one over RX. And all that means is just that it can be any number of resistors, 50 resistors for whatever reasons you can have. You can use this formula and figure it up. Another way of writing it is get rid of this reciprocal, and you do that by making the reciprocal of this addition of reciprocals. So it's wrote this way. If you've got capacitors, they are opposite. Capacitors in parallel add together, but in series, you follow this except this will be C1, C2, and plus, 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 CX. If you have inductors, when you're figuring the Henry's of the inductor, which is a measurement of inductance, it works the same way as resistors. Inductors in series is just added together in parallel, reciprocal, reciprocals. Now, one other little tidbit of math that you don't have to memorize but when we was talking about radio theory, and was talking about oscillators, we had a coil in parallel with a capacitor. Um, I'm sure somebody might be thinking, well, uh, what sizes and how is that figured? Well, it uses this formula right here. The frequency equals 1 over 2 pi times the square root 
of L, which is inductor or coil, times the capacitance. This will be in Henry's and this will be in Farad's. So, the reason you need to know that is until uh, you get your numbers right. If you take your coil and figure it up in Henry's, what it is, you know, it can be like one micro or one micro Henry, which is 0 .00, it's 1 to the times 10 to the minus 6, so it would be five zeros after the decimal point, and times it times, you know, some capacitance, say one microfarad, which is 0 .001 farad, or point zero 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 one mic, uh, anyway. I'm getting confused here, I'm sorry. Uh, it's a late night and I'm tired, but anyway, one micro Henry is t 1 times 10 to the minus 6 I, is the way I always work things. One micro uh, farad will be the same. Multiply them together, take the square root of them times 2 pi, and then take the reciprocal. We'll give you a frequency. The This formula you don't need to memorize. There are several formulas that you don't ever need to memorize. Um, you can look these up online. You can look them up in a book. There, there's calculators online that will figure all this. So don't uh, dread yourself. But this and this is very good to know. And knowing how to do your parallel resistance, series capacitance, in parallel inductors uh, is well worth knowing and remembering so that you can do you know basic Th this will come in very handy because you can find any one of your three things that's in the radio your voltage your current or your resistance by knowing the other two so um, this video is getting long enough so I just want to touch on a little bit of the math and uh, give you another video to watch. That'll be all. Thank you.